Welcome to Call Camp, everyone. I am Extreme Elixir. This is Imaru. This is Mudahar. And this is episode five of the Call Camp podcast. So today we have something special where uh, at the beginning of last week's episode, we said uh, we would react to your guys' hot takes if you left them in the comments or sent them to us on Twitter. A few of you guys actually did respond. And again, I open up the floor uh, for people out there. If you guys want to put your hot takes down in the comments, do it. Uh, last week's episode went awesome, but uh, uh, I, I I think I'm just going to start this off uh, with some hot takes here. Uh, the first hot take that we have on our hands here is by Gel P Spark, I think is how you say that. Uh, that says think, yeah. uh, their hot take is that the uh, mainline Pokemon games are not fun or engaging Unless you apply your own rules or challenges. Bro, how is this a hot take? That dude's the safest take in the fucking world. Oh my god. That should be a given, to be honest. Uh, Generation 6 onwards is especially bad for this, as the games become so handholdy that natural progression or discovery is non-existence outside of the names you give your Pokemon. Yeah, I, I, I I genuinely do feel like this is one of the safest takes we'll hear. I say I agree the fact that beginning with Gen 6, everything just became like incredibly like easy. That, that's when they started going brain dead. Uh, worse in the subsequent sequels. But uh, the thing is that X Gen 6, I think is the first one that I actually noticed. Like, wow, I didn't lose a single battle yeah. throughout my, my entire playthrough. <laughs> well, on top of that, I mean, I think Gen 6 is where it was when they made a EXP share apply to your entire party. Um, mm hmm but then on top of that, why don't they make that shit a toggle? Like, why doesn't that I, just become like a toggle in the options menu so people can? I like, think that's because I don't really. I, I yeah, think I don't really I think, enjoy it. I think at that point it was a toggle, I but I think so. in the latest one, the latest one, it's not. It's yep. like on on forever. Yeah, it. I believe when they first introduced it, they made it a toggle, and then after that, it was because back then I could. Say, and the problem was that even if you toggled it uh, to being off. It was still such a mind-numbingly easy game that it didn't matter. I could I could sit down and do a nuzlocke of the entirety of X and Y, I bet, and not lose a single time. Okay, but, like, to be fair, shouldn't the Pokemon community kind of, like, grow up? Like, these games are made for, like, children. <laughs> okay, but alternatively, <laughs> maybe, hot takes, maybe you know? uh, my hot take is maybe the Pokemon company should grow up, grow with their, grow with their uh, fans. What you want them to add tech nines into the game? <laughs> well, this isn't power. Well, someone did, someone did, and it worked out. So I don't know, maybe. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying. Like <laughs> that's why I'm so happy. That's why I'm so happy with Palwar because it just I feel like it made the whole Pokemon community just shaking their boots a little bit. It's like okay, this is what you should do. It, did, it didn't make them shake their just boots. They, all they stuff. did was go to Nintendo and say, "Look at the bad company doing things." <laughs> Look at the back of yeah, it. That's, do, that's, that that, that's literally Nintendo fans, like actually <laughs> mentally deficient, all of them. Uh, literally, at the slightest chance that their fucking franchise could be threatened by an exterior force, it's like, please, Daddy Nintendo, sue them all. <laughs> <laughs> please, yeah. oh man, don't, don't make me go into the whole user thing because I'm just gonna lose my. Oh, shit, dude, man. you know what's funny? Like, you know, you know what's funny? Like, open world games, like tons of other games, try to copy GTA's formula. And we're just like, all right, cool. We'll just wait for the next GTA game. To set the <laughs> standard. GTA 60, cool. yeah, yeah. You know what? Seen as, yeah, I mean, seen as we don't have another Nintendo based question, let's talk about Yuzu for one second here. In the fact that Sony uh, seems to have been. Oh, no, that was BS. Was, that was it? Bullshit news. The PCSX, dude. That wasn't confirmed. Oh, yet. dude. Oh, if, thank that, God. if that. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, all I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is that if, uh, if, if game companies would have collaborated with uh emulating software like that that's a huge fucking win no they won't because nintendo fans like fail to realize it's like <laughs> but you're like pirating the video game okay what are you doing dude the motherfuckers that are playing the games on their gaming computer are like 4k 60 fps you think those motherfuckers don't have the money to buy switches i own fucking multiple switches on this desk <laughs> you know what i do i fucking rip those games off but you're the fucking minority of people that do it. Okay, then fucking come up with some actual usable data first off. Okay? Yeah, that's the whole thing because you bought those games. Those games are yours. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Well, bro, if I want to run I wanna, if I wanna, I will. Yeah, if I want to come on my fucking copy, 
copy of like true i will fucking do it all right it's my god-given fucking right <laughs> all right like get the fuck out of here you know, and it's like how could you play a game at 60 fps it's like it's like yeah because it <laughs> fucking play this re how? this like fucking retarded account was like look at astral chain it's 30 it's, 30, it's, playable. it's playable like it's even better at 60 oh, like, it's the I one that said it. yeah it's the one that said oh man you can barely tell uh, the change between 30 and 60 like bro what is wrong with your well, eyes well, then? I, I i agree like some people can barely check it and they're retarded like it's I'll, safe dude, to they say, are they know? are visually impaired like, they are 100 percent visually impaired. no 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 like like yeah exactly like it's like okay sure you can't see the difference and i'll probably fight like i'll fight for you if it comes between like you know 144 frames and like 250 because at that point it's yeah like really at that point returns. yeah mm-hmm. but like 30 to 60 like i'm playing through final fantasy at 30 not 60 just because like at 60 frames on the ps5 it literally looks like you have to you you get the Mr. Magoo experience where it's just fucking <laughs> like mud, you know. So for clarity, for the little resolution, I played at thirty, but I can feel the difference. I wish I could play it at sixty. Like dog, if I could emulate or buy Rebirth on PC, I would. Like Dragon's Dogma, that shit drops to like twenty on the PS5. That was an immediate purchase on PC. I'm like, I'm not playing a fucking action game. At like fucking you know handicap speeds, like it's not like welfare <laughs> frame rate, bro. Well, that's what that's like, what I exactly. that's what I said was I, when I saw that post, I yeah. was just like, I was like, are you telling me your eyes can't see, can't see like all like well, literally? I I'm yeah. used to when I stream, I stream at sixty frames. I when I'm not streaming, I'm gaming. Yeah. I'm gaming at one hundred and forty four frames, and I can feel the difference between sixty well, the, and one forty four. Yeah. Now going from one forty four to thirty, well, it's yeah. borderline undoable for me now. <laughs> you well, it's like you part? can always filter the Nintendards because it's like they're the ones complaining now, and like the Xbox and PlayStation. Like if you buy a new gen system like Xbox PS, you get a choice now, yeah. sixty or thirty, yeah. or sometimes even yeah. higher. Exactly. So like people just get to pick, and you know most people I talk to, they pick performance mode, and you know they enjoy it. Yeah, my favorite part about the whole like visuals with Nintendo stuff is when they release the trailer for uh, Scarlet, and they 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 show these like grand views of like the Paldea region, yep. and in there look just like the pictures that I just show you here. Yep. It's like it looks bro, so <laughs> that 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 screenshot you just sent. It Ew. looks so ever, it looks so bland. You know, you know I I sent that same screenshot alongside Los Santos and GTA Five to like a fucking I was arguing with like a Nintendo dude, ooh, ooh. and like he was like, oh well, you're comparing like Rockstar to like Game Freak. I'm like, yeah, I'm comparing yeah. a fucking yeah. I'm comparing what a smaller fuck? company GTA to Pokemon. Not only yeah, that, only one of them is a like eleven year old <laughs> game, dude. Like fucking wake yeah. up. One is like the biggest media franchises in the world not what it is the biggest media franchise in the world you're telling me they cannot spare a few more changes to make their games look good it's funny because like as much shit as i give sports games like nba and whatever right they are like cutting edge when it comes to like the visuals like i remember when the ps5 trailer for nba dropped and i'm like oh shit Mm. though i mean they look like real human beings well they honestly they kind of are more sweat to the people that's what it makes you look like better well like even the texture work the animation quality mm. i always see upgrades to that right and i'm like yeah. okay so even if they're like the same slop sports games every year like at least they're doing something with the technology right and yeah. i mean they, they still pull like fucking decent magic out for like the brazilian players for like the P- ps3 <laughs> and stuff like the old generation systems not I, to I dog on it or that. anything those are those are like the i mean that's a big marketplace so they're like of course they're going to make ps3 versions and they're yeah, going to do the best that they can dude their whole you youtube know? channel is dedicated on exploring ps PS3 games that are still active today. People yeah. play that shit because sometimes you don't really have much of a choice. Yep. Mm-hmm. You want to know what my favorite part about this picture is actually? Mm. Those tiny, those, that on those the tiny, tiny ass uh, uh, trees. The text in, at the very bottom that says game footage oh, yeah, yeah. is not yeah. final. Because guess what? It, it they is. weren't kidding. It looked worse on, on final release. Bro, God. I'm looking at this. I can't even see the fucking shadows. I can see the frame rate <laughs> for this game. It's fucking ass. You, I you can, know what the fuck? It's so part crunchy, is? dude. <laughs> this is even worse for Game Freak because, like, you, you, I can pull out a screenshot, like the worst screenshot from Tears of the Kingdom, and it would fucking bend over <laughs> and ass fuck this game any day. <laughs> exactly, like, dude. And that's just the visuals because I remember the biggest thing that I remember seeing in Scarlet is the fucking animations, dude. The whole eating the sandwich anime, that shit is embarrassing. Dude. Yeah. That shit is like, oh. Dude, you know uh, when you're like 10 feet away? 
when you're 10 feet away from a Pokemon and you can see them like refresh at half the frame rate. Right? So it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything is stop motion. I'm like, bro. Well, <laughs> like there there are games that do that. Like you could probably find like something in Cyberpunk 2077. It does that. But that's like a distant detail. Yep. Like you'll never notice it unless you're exactly, like, yeah. really looking in. It's like the bold people from the Spider-Man game. You know, yeah. the, really, like that, the yeah. really unfortunate part here is that the po- I actually really love some of the Pokemon designs in the new Pokemon, and the game's unplayable. Mm-hmm. It's unplayable to me, and I I unfortunately can't see myself getting invested in any of the new Pokemon because of just oh, yeah, how fucking exactly. awful it is. I fucking love Sprigatito. It's great, but I cannot play your game. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh... All right, so our next uh, hot take we got here, uh, which all of us can definitely comment on this one, uh, for the hell thirty four T says my hot take is that seventy five percent of the MCU is hot garbage. I'm gonna go a little higher and probably drop that to eighty five percent. You know, really? You think that? Much? I haven't seen jack shit since Infinity okay, War. Okay, so here here's my. Mm. I saw Captain Marvel and she was okay, but like fucking anything else I was like. Yeah, here's I my know. here's my take I mean, on this yeah. pre okay. uh, pre End Game. I feel like I feel like pre End Game uh, MCU. There's probably only like two or three bad movies out of that bunch. I agree. Yeah. After After End Game, that list got a lot longer. Yeah. When I think about like Endgame, when I think about pre Endgame, and we watched all the movies, yeah. like okay, the only one we didn't mm-hmm. watch was Incredible Hulk, because ain't nobody gonna watch that dog shit. But yeah. <laughs> no, when we were when we were watching like the original movies, I think the only ones that I really could sit down and watch again, uh, well, I like the Ant Man movies because I yeah. think Michael Pena does a great job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I I the only ones that I can watch are Captain America. I actually like I hate when people jerk off Iron really Man like because Captain it's like. America, yeah. Cap- well, when people when people jerk off like uh, Iron Man, I'm like I actually see more like character in Captain America, and I like the because wor- I think all the world building happens in the Captain America movies for the right most yeah, part. Civil exactly. War takes yeah. place there, which yeah. I I I, mm-hmm. I remember when uh, the first one came out, and people were like, "That's the thing that the MCU used to do. It used to give like characters that are like not that popular, like put in the middle of the spotlight." Like, how many people were talking about Captain America before this? Yeah, the movie no. was so good, and I love that it was in like World War II. It was in the forties. It was super like uh, of the times. You have the whole t- uh, bit about him just being a super soldier, but not being used, so they make him like an attraction. I love that shit. Winter Soldier, fucking amazing movie. Probably one of the best ones pre Endgame. I fucking love that one. But I'll say, yeah, I agree. Everything from, like, Iron Man 1 until, like, Endgame, most of it, i say, like, 80% is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. And I remember when we used to sit and watch those movies, try like, okay, let's catch all of them. And yeah. whenever one would drop in the theater, we would just watch it in the theater and then discuss it at night. Yep. Yeah. Um, then after I mean, Endgame, yeah. after Endgame, yeah. the only one I kind of care about was uh, Spider-Man. But then even get, after that, it was yeah. like, okay, that's, that's... I guess I would say, like, maybe for me, half the movies pre-Endgame are good. Like, I'd watch mm. them, but, like, 100% anything afterwards, I could not give a fuck. Um, yeah, like, let's see. I watched, at post-Endgame, I watched the Spider-Man ones. I really like them. Um, mm. I watched the new Doctor Strange that came out. It was all yeah, right. It was pretty awful. It was, I, I thought it was terrible. It was okay. It wasn't anything the special. Captain, uh, the new Captain, uh, sorry, the new Doctor Strange. Yeah, the Multiverse yeah, yeah. of Madness. It was all right. It wasn't anything to write home about, though. I think it was dog shit. Um, the thing is that it became such before. Okay, you had a lot of movies to watch, but if you watch them like on release, there wasn't that much of a problem. And if you think about it, it was not too much. It was like eight movies. You could like take a week, yeah. watch one at a night. You should be fine. But the thing now is that they expect you to the watch TV the movies, shows. watch the shows, watch like several seasons of shows, shows that are mostly garbage. One Division, here's my review to One Division. Watch the first four episodes. That's it. The first four episodes are great. I love them. The last four episodes are absolute dog shit. Like the it, the quality just drops so ha- bad. It's it's insane. I hate And that's that the funny thing and is that after that I didn't watch shit about I didn't watch any other show. I think that's that. the funny thing there too is that I me I don't think Muda ever watched WandaVision. 
WandaVision? No, no, bro. I'd rather eat a fucking. <laughs> I'd rather. I'd rather fucking eat a cock. <laughs> no, I gotta <laughs> say. Dude. I gotta say the only movie that I haven't watched yet that it's post Endgame that's supposed to be really damn good. It's Guardians Three. I haven't watched that yep, yet. Yep, I haven't seen that one. I yet. heard that shit. Yeah, I heard that's really. But like really for good. every Guardian, like for every Guardians Three, there's always like ten Madam Webs. Like, bro. yeah. Oh man, I love Madam <laughs> Web. Not because of the movie, but because Dakota, uh, fuck the girl who plays the main character. She's like actively shitting on the movie. That's <laughs> awesome. Sony doesn't like that. Sony doesn't like that at all. It's my yeah. favorite thing. Um, it's great. The only other post uh, post Endgame movie that I watched Ooh, was uh, cut out. Oh. Oh. what? Uh, no, the only other post. Sorry, no, you you kind of cut out for a second. The only other post Endgame movie that I ever watched was um uh that new that Thor movie uh Oof. with uh what's her with Jane Foster in it, and okay. it wasn't. It wasn't at, I mean, Christian Bale kills it. He does a fantastic job. But otherwise, it kind of was an ass movie. Man, I just miss U.S. Marine Corps Eric Roberts or whatever the name was from <laughs> Black Banner. Bro, I, I would honestly stick my cock into a pencil sharpener than watch a Thor movie again. I think all the Thor movies suck. What? Ass. You didn't even like all Ragnarok? I say right no, now like, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I guess I guess the best of the Thor movies, sure, but I don't know. I just hate Thor as a character. Like, just something about what? Chris Hemsworth wow. pisses me off. Dude, he's great. I think he's perfect casting. All right, I, 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 feel, I feel like that's. A I mean, hot I take. just, I just, I just don't really enjoy Thor. Like, I don't really care about like this Asgardian bullshit. Um, mm. Just like I also don't care about the Tony Stark bullshit. Like, he kind of was like, oh, he's funny and everything, but. After a while, I'm like, get off the screen, bro. Let fucking Chris Evans take the lead, okay? Like, well, he just won then, an Oscar, so he's yeah. never coming back to that role, bro. Yeah. Man, that shit is done. Man, why, why are you, why are you jerking off Chris Evans so hard, man? Because Captain America is actually cool, bro. Anytime the Hulk comes on screen, I want to fucking die. I hate fucking Mark Ruffalo, dude. What? Well, I kind of hate the. Hated that, I, I kind of hate what they did to the the Hulk. The, it, it used to be. Have you seen how the Hulk is in the fucking comics? Yeah. It's literally like an apocalyptic event. And here now, it's just like a comedy act anymore. Like, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, by the, the end of it, just... he 100% is a comedy Shit. act. It sucks, because you Bro, remember... Mark Ruffalo's career is a comedy act. Remember Holy the... Shit. Okay, stop going out for a second. Remember <laughs> just how, like, stupid and silly he was in the last game, in the yeah. last movies? Mm -hmm. Remember in the first Avengers movie, 2012... When Black Widow would talk to him in this village, like everything is low key, everything like trying to keep him calm because yep. it was so scary. Yep. Everyone's shitting bricks that he would get mad. Yep. And then when it was uh, when at the end when he was like, "Okay, I'm calling," she was like, "Okay, call it off." And then you just see a panning shot of like agents preparing to shoot like a fucked up. Yeah, that's the Hulk that I miss. But now we yeah. have like the jokey one with like the tacos and shit. It's like, I don't, oh, you I mean don't the, one that, uh, the one that the one that appeared on She Hulk? Oh, man, I don't even want to talk about that. Bro, all these TV shows are just the fucking worst thing Disney has ever made. I've heard apparently like, the uh, Loki TV show is good. I heard that season two is awesome. I can't. I heard that one is pretty yeah. mad. Unfortunately. I heard that season two is awesome. Unfortunately, I can't be bothered to watch it. Yeah. Well, it's like here. what Amari said. It's like for every one good show, they have like 700 bad ones. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. And so. I, maybe that's more of a Disney issue than it is a Marvel issue. Because I'm going to be real with you, a lot of the uh, Star Wars shows that have come out are kind of ass. The only good oh, yeah, ones right. so far have been uh, Mandalorian and... Uh, what's that other one? Obi-Wan. I think Obi-Wan was such a missed opportunity. And I, Bro, I didn't like it. The games are better. I liked <laughs> a few scenes... But I think overall it was pretty disappointing, especially for the the like the return of uh, Darth Vader, Ewan McGregor, both of them. Yeah, I love the the final fight. Oh, the final uh, fight is here. amazing. Spoilers here: the final fight when he like breaks the mask off of Vader and he just like tearfully breaking down is like I'm sorry, Anakin, for everything. It's like I I love that shit. Yep. It's great, but. To get to that, we had to like get the shitty ass plot with Riva <laughs> that was supposed to be a kid. But then become evil to hunt Obi Wan. I don't give a shit. She was a piece of shit for like years, and I was supposed to feel bad about it. No, fuck her. She cut the hand off of an innocent woman in Episode One. I don't give a fuck. 
Fuck Riva. Fuck Riva. Oh my God, she dies. She gets fucking killed. Fuck off. She gets killed. <laughs> she gets impaled by Darth Vader. But apparently, she, you know, impalement. The same thing that killed Qui-Gon Jinn. Oh my God, listen to me. And, <laughs> and she survives it. How? That's straight up blood armor. I Fuck that shit. Actually, I like though, <laughs> I, I didn't think about that. But yeah, 100%. Fuck that Bro, shit. do you like Michael as a character? What the fuck is Michael? GTA 5, Michael. Do you like him as a character? Uh, I mean, he's a piece of shit. He's horrible. Okay, well, and I'm, that's... I'm glad you're consistent. <laughs> I was like, oh, so she cuts a hand off and this dude sells yeah, his best But, but right the now. thing is that Michael doesn't survive a, sh a shotgun blast to the chest, man. He doesn't go through that. Uh, I want to replay GTA 5 storyline and go over exactly how many times that fucker should have died. <laughs> gameplay wise or like story yeah. wise? Because well, in gameplay, gameplay, yeah, you wise. can get shot. In gameplay, you can get shot all the fucking time. You get the bro, bullet once and everything, but you're still going. Bro, this 49 year old is taking fucking buzzard attack chopper <laughs> shots. Okay, chief. Well, he's now 59, so careful. That is true. Yeah, he's, he's fucking shit. old as fuck. But yeah, um, no, with the uh, with like, uh, man, what a tangent to go from like fucking <laughs> we're talking about to like fuck. Star Wars to this. No, I I, I want to remember because with all the Star Wars fatigue that I went through, me and Muda actually sat down a few months ago and we watched the original trilogy, episode four, five, and six, and they were great. Yeah, I had a lot of fun watching them. And after that, we got into a little Star Wars binge and we played Battlefront two, yep. which was a lot of fun. Um. And when you like eliminate everything before and after the original trilogy, I think it's still mm -hmm. better. Call me yeah, a fucking by the way, guys, you in want. like two days, Battlefront original drops again on Steam. Yep, yep, it does. Oh, I saw. So, yeah, original are we gonna play collection. that shit? Oh, I bought it. Dude. I'm ready to go. Oh, damn. I gotta play. I gotta I buy might it. have to get that then. Buy. Uh, all right, Muda. There's gonna be two hot takes coming your coming your way, hot and heavy. Sure. Uh, we'll start with the one that I feel like you'll be less offended by. Uh, Cowboy what? John 9 says, I played Rainbow Six Siege from 2016 to 2018 mainly. Mm -hmm. I think the game yeah. is absolute dog trash and worse than Halo 5. The game is pretty much pay to win. You can buy specific operators if you have enough money. Uh, I'm not reading all of this. It takes way the too long. The game is pay to win. Bro, he already said he liked Halo 5 more. Like, opinion fucking discarded. <laughs> like, what does it matter? And, okay, so let's let's break this one down. Yes, the beginning of Rainbow Six Siege was rougher, but worse than Halo Five. Like, it's like, what do you mean, pay to win as the operators? Fucking unlock them. Well, that's what he's saying is that you can pay to unlock certain overpowered operators. No, nah, bro, you're not losing because you're going up against Ash. You're losing because your aim sucks. You're losing. You're, 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 that's my reason to lose. You're you're not losing because you're up against Clash. You're losing because you don't know how to play around her. Yeah, exactly. It's like, dude, bro. You, and what do you mean? See, I'm pretty sure Siege now gives you like every like base core operator, uh, basically at launch. So you you're not completely outclassed. Well, now, but the thing is, the back in like when it released, 2015, 2017. No, well, he's comparing it to like now though. He's like Siege now. Okay. Yeah. Pay to win. Um, shit, you know? Overpowered man, you're really str if you're struggling against Buck or Frost, I don't know. <laughs> Especially uh, in the in the era when uh, well, Jager actually, way way back yeah. then, way back then, I mean, Frost was a really good operator when she first dropped. Mm. Um, I mean, she still is, depending on how you use her. Right. I mean, that's all CG. It's like how you use the operators. It's like, but bro, you're comparing it to fucking Halo Five, like the most fucking like dog shit Halo <laughs> game out there. I mean, how do I know this is not a troll? This is the thing, right? He, uh, he also says it takes way too long to get 25,000 credits for operators if you don't pay for them with real money. Uh, you can use these operators to beat anyone in all modes. At least with Halo 5, the only place it was pay to win was for Warzone. Anywhere else, like Arena or Community, you could not use your rec pack, power weapons, or anything. Updates have consistently made the game even worse, so much that they pretty much have gotten rid of the ACOG. Okay, the reason they got In rid Siege? of the ACOG... The reason they got rid of the... What do you mean, you know, what ACOG? They still have it for attackers. Exactly. What, and what? on top of that, the reason they got rid of the yeah. ACOG, especially on Defender's side, is because it was so uh, overbearingly powerful on Defender's side. They have it for Marksman Rifles. It's like they've balanced the game out pretty well, actually, I would say. I would agree. I would agree that... Uh, 
that uh, for the most part they've definitely balanced it out. Do I think maybe it takes too long to unlock uh, operators if you aren't paying for them with cash? Maybe. Yes. It, it might take too long to unlock them at 25,000. Like, I, I, no, like I, yes. I started playing the game and there was like, so there's this new thing where like, if you do a few challenges, you can unlock Twitch, Ash, yep. basically every role operator, like Lion and stuff like that. Uh, Montaigne. So you can unlock the operators that give you probably the best understanding of like every role yeah. in the game. Absolutely. You know? Like Ash is a frontline attacker. Montaigne is a fucking, you know, like support. So I, and Thermite as well too. So, and, and also it's like, they've also upped the recruit as well. So you get an access to like a good amount <laughs> of low, low key recruits underrated and, as fuck. Yeah. I mean, recruit is usable because you actually get like attachments and you get some abilities as well. So when you're starting off and look, there's a lot of challenges that you can use in the game to build renown faster too. Right. Um, you can, you do a lot of those situations earlier to also get access to like a, a bounty of renown. That's how I unlock like at least three operators. I just did the single player, single player to get access to some cash. So I don't know. I mean, obviously maybe my perception's different because I haven't had to unlock an operator since like fucking three years ago when I literally grinded for every single one of them. Yep. I play siege every day. Um, but like now I think if you're a player jumping in, you get access to a fair amount of operators starting off really early. I think comparing it to like Halo 5 is already a dud because I, first off, Halo 5's multiplayer problem, the reason why I can't play it is because you can download a hundred gigabytes of dog shit, which is that game, <laughs> and you will only ever play two maps in arena because the game's matchmaking is dog shit. And then the Warzone firefight or whatever that exists, it's like, it was fun for like a year, but it's just another one of those live service games that mm. they promise you a fuck ton of content, but they don't actually like, I feel like I never actually experience all of that content, but to be fair, you know. I think this guy might've had another hot take that I didn't use okay. that, uh, said something along the lines of halo infinite being a, uh, being shit on for no just reason or something along those lines. I mean, Halo... Oh, buddy, Halo Infinite oh. was dog shit on release. Let's not it fucking... It was dog shit on release. I remember... Even I remember, a, I remember... It was dog shit. I remember falling asleep I, playing it. I, I gave it some credit when I was playing it with, like, fucking Charlie, you guys, when it came out. Because on beta, I was like, oh, it's a beta, whatever. Yep. Maybe the full yep. release will be better. Uh, oh, no. The full release was fucking dog shit. <laughs> now, it might be slightly better, okay? I, I agree. It's a lot better, but fucking... Eons have passed in the gaming world, okay? Why you're not playing Helldivers 2 right. and playing Halo Infinite? Like, bro, yeah, get the fuck out of here, okay? Uh, honestly, though. Uh, all right, so our next hot take. Uh, Imaru can run away with this one. Me and him were laughing okay. at this one earlier. Uh, Kronos Dorma uh, says, My hot take, Blaze the Cat is hotter than Amy Rose. I don't care about designing which anthropomorphic underage character is hotter. That's my question. You should look, take a look at yourself <laughs> before asking yeah, that kind of shit. At some point when you write that down, do you ever yeah, not yeah. like have the burning desire of like... <laughs> exactly. Fucking like, question yourself for a minute, bro. Like, what the fuck? Man, what fucking underage fictional furry character should I be rubbing my dick Yeah, through? dude, exactly. The Come 12 on, year old, now. the 14-year-old. Which Oh my God, so many options. Yeah, they're both illegal, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or is this no, it, is this where we get I, the I, uh is this where we get the uh Yandre dev uh explanation? Oh shit, dude, let, let I, me call just, let me call an expert. <laughs> like if you're gonna fuck a hedgehog, at least make sure they pass under the age of consent, right? Like that's yeah, dude, you day, could you, you know? could easily say vanilla or something. I don't know. <laughs> isn't isn't it all like six? Vanilla is the mom. Yeah, no no, you're thinking of uh How cream. old is she though? I don't know, How mom age. Well, I don't know, bro. It's like fucking to be fair, rural to be Indian fair, tribal mom. Where to be still fair, mom age, the, mom age the, could be 16 to whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Adult. I'm pretty sure it's an adult. Like, it's the only canonical Sonic character that's alive confirmed to have had sex. <laughs> Well, how can you confirm she's had sex? What if she's a virgin? What if it's like she a virgin has a Mary child? Situation? Oh, what if it's a Virgin Mary situation? What if she's like the holiest character in the fucking Sonic universe? I, right, homie, I got you. Vanilla. Uh, there seems to be discrepancy here, but she is either twenty six or thirty three. One of the two. There you go. Perfect. That one. That's my answer. <laughs> how old is Sonic? How old is Sonic? I. I, okay, know. I mean, out. officially, 
officially Sega cannot discard the ages officially, but they're still there prior to that. So you can just look at them. I always enjoy Sonic community questions. Bro, stop masturbating to hedgehogs, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> apparently, oh, sorry, stop masturbating your operators. Apparently, if you go by officials, the operators are at least over eighteen. Valkyrie's at least legal. <laughs> yeah, this Valkyrie's is Valkyrie's at least in the U.S. Navy SEALs. You know what Valkyrie does? That fucking half the Sonic characters can't do. Pay the IRS yearly. <laughs> hey, I'm not here. The one saying, "Oh, well, which one of the underage one is hotter?" I'm not doing that. Well, guess what? Every operator in Siege is over the age. Even the youngest <laughs> motherfucker, Mute, is over the age. How old is Mute? I think he's like thirty. <laughs> yeah, he's. I don't think there's wasn't, a single one under thirty. Wasn't Smoke? Wasn't Smoke like? In the mid twenties or something. Smoke was slightly older, but he joined the navy like really early. Yeah, I actually want to see what fucking Thatcher's age is because when we started playing, the Thatcher game, was, was like, like sixty or so. Yeah. He was like, well, 68. I remember yeah. when I started playing Dokaibi was like twenty eight, twenty nine. I remember that was like young. Yeah, bro, now she's like milf. Now she's like gilf territory for Korean people. <laughs> <laughs> it's way past. Uh, Thatcher is apparently fifty four years old. He was born in sixty one. Oh. Oh bullshit! I think they. So, they no, 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 no. We got, we got to add that up to 2024. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you got to add that shit up. That would numbers. mean uh, 2024. That would mean he's 58. No, I can't do math. Still operating. I can't do math. Still operating. When was he? When was he born? Oh, that would be six. He'd be, he's 63 officially now. He's still rolling. <laughs> 68, I don't think, man. Bro, he's still rolling. He's still throwing them EMP charges. Man, Fuck I his... miss I miss the Siege uh, 3D animations that they used to do. Dude, I Like the too. Thatcher one. That shit was so cool. And now we have yeah. like fucking Drama Island animations now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I loved the Siege, an- the Siege anime stuff that they did. To be honest, I'm just I, yeah. capping. I haven't watched much of it. So. I really liked the uh, like the operator intros they used to do back like in the day. Like I, that's what I really like. Really loved about Siege is like when they announced new operators. Like fucking, I remember the best one is like Operation Chimera with like Lion and Finca. It's like fucking they're walking in together. Ash is giving the little dialogue. She's yeah, like, fucking, that's great. You know, we need operators that can fight against VX mm. gas, Ebola, all that <laughs> shit. Um, and the then like the you know, one I remember, yeah. Yeah, and the one with Thatcher beating the shit out of people in a fucking <laughs> yeah. box. That, that's my favorite. That's my absolute favorite. Hammer and the scalpel. <laughs> I mean, they they have one now. Like they up the uh, they upgraded the um, lore a little bit. Uh, current six leader is dead now. Yep. I loaded yep. up the game and like Ooh. the Indian guy Harry or whatever the so you know you had the you had Angela Bassett as like the original six yeah, in yeah. the first trailer and then they replaced it with Harry and then mm-hmm. Harry gets shot into the heart by like this new guy named Deimos or whatever. Yep. Who's so, six now? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's we don't know yet. Decided. I think oh, we same. have an interim commander right now. Oh wow! Damn. Yeah, I I, I mean I the shit. thing about like the thing about Siege is like with the lore they built, I'm surprised they're not putting money towards like a little single player experience. That kind of I am too a little you bit back to old. Yeah, I mean, they were going to do that with Overwatch. I mean, isn't that end, kind of... I you know how that ended. Unfor- I feel like that they could have done it in uh, Wildlands. Uh, they have Caviera in Wildlands, and I think they have Valkyrie. Yeah, uh, but those are, mm. those, are, those are usually... Those are just, like, crossover things. I mean, like, I would love a game in the original, like, GTA uh, lore. where Or not GTA, so what the fuck. I would like uh, the <laughs> Rainbow Six, like, the current lore that they have set. They could go back and make, like, an original Rainbow Six style game with, like, planning... Like that Swan would actually be reaching. sick. That would be sick. I mean, cool, because Siege has a plot, but what, all you play is just like operators killing themselves. Like, or the teams just killing each other. Well, there is, and the there, whole plot is about the white masks, right? Well, no, I think the white masks have been killed off for this point. Okay, so we have no pl- It's now <laughs> yeah. about Raven, well, Claw, or whatever. Well, to be totally are. fair, the entirety, the entirety of Rainbow Six uh, gameplay is actually just simulations from my understanding. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it's just yeah. It's so there's ready. just a team of people ready for whatever. Yeah, there's literally, no they're just fucking. I they're think, just playing uh, computer games. <laughs> well, it was like the the whole thing is like they kept building, like they kept adding to the roster, and after a few years, when you had like fifty operators on each attacker defender side, it's just like fucking. Mm-hmm. Where does the story go now? Yeah. I mean, at this point, they don't even bring like new uh, operating teams anymore. I remember back then it was like at least there was they, some anna- they announced like, GIGN and. 
They, well, GIGN was part of the, of the original. original. They had like, yeah, yeah. They had like, I remember the first expansions. It was like, oh, the Canadian JTF two. Yeah, then, exactly. Like, Actual yep, teams yep. and stuff. And now it's yeah. just like the Raven. Uh, that yeah, that, it's all Night it's Haven, all fa- yeah. it's all fictional stuff. Well, yeah. okay, I remember when they brought Cali into the game too. It was like, oh, okay, they had a lore reason for why they couldn't bring an actual Indian counter terror unit because exactly. yep. Indian counter terror units don't have women. So she was just like, I did all the training and I built my own PMC. But then now they're using her PMC to bring in people. It's like, oh, this operator's part of Night Haven now. Everyone's Night Haven. Everyone's yeah, part Night of Haven. Night Haven. That was it, not Raven. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, the, I, yeah. now when you say that they have so many characters and all this lore and everything, one thing that I would love to do is what League of Legends is doing right now. I fucking hate League of Legends. The game, the game fucking sucks. But I love the world. I love the characters. I love the the whole continents, all of the stories. And now they're finally, 10 years later, they're doing stuff with that. You have Arcane, which is like the one of the best animated shows ever. You got uh, Ruin King, a pretty cool RPG game. You got the the fighting game coming out. You got an adventure game with Nunu. You got an adventure game with the Yorl. Like they're expanding on everything. I feel like Siege could do that. I feel like they should make, I want to see an animated show in that original, not the anime style, but like the original, like the, yeah, the 3D ones. Yeah, but I want, like, one thing that I kind of expect, like, I hope that, like, maybe they might one day make, like, six an actual character that you bring into the field. Like, mm-hmm. they actually call him, like, the number six and then IX and, like, actually have a playable six. Exactly. Maybe they might sick. do it. And then, like, that guy becomes team commander. And then, like, they can make a show around that. I feel like Siege has, like, an interesting show. Like, the Tom Clancy universe really does. Yeah. Because... Like in the in the lore, it's like they have these like international conventions, right? The whole like championships, or uh, where they're like doing the five on five, but like mm-hmm. in the universe against each other. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, as they do that to showcase to the world, it's like you got to have like the B team who are doing the behind the scenes ops or something. Like cover that. Like they built so much lore for these characters. Like if you actually read the bio, and trust me, I have. Like as sad as it sounds, um, but yeah, like. It's not- a lot of the lore, a lot of the bios they write, like I remember Lion and Doc are the most interesting because Doc is like one of those dudes that's like an actual proper, honest to God, super amazing medical professional. And mm-hmm. Lion used to be this piece of shit guy that walked out on his girlfriend, um, walked out on his kid. Like he yeah. had a kid at one point, walked out on his family and everything, started doing drugs, was like total piece of shit. And then that's eventually cool. like he he like he has an ultimatum it's like fuck i i have no kid any like my family hates me everyone hates me he joins the fucking gi he joins the french military Mm -hmm. and like works through it until he gets into like gign and like the reason why him and doc are like not friends it's a interesting lore reason is because fucking during one operation in like africa uh lion gets like three of doc's like closest allies and friends killed because he but he does it to help the greater good and, like, as much as he apologizes to him, like, Doc never it. forgives him, right? And That's Lion, thing. There's so much nuance in that. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know like, that. That's just awesome. Like, like, Lion's story now, like, compared to what he used to be, he, like, literally sits in his apartment reading books and, like, listening to music and, like, praying to God. Like, he actually, like, he, like, he literally, like, is, like, the fucking chapel leader or whatever in Team <laughs> Rainbow. Like, it's crazy. And then, like, even with Fuse, you know the meme about, like, him fusing the hostages? Yeah, yeah. I think it was Ying that shit on Fuse for that uh, idea. And Fuse is, like, he felt genuinely sad because he built it to stop bad guys. And he's the only one out of the Spetsnaz that really cared about, like, the hostage <laughs> situation and everything. Oh, that's so, awesome. I love and, that like, Tachanka is, like, the last holdout in the Spetsnaz that was from, like, Alpha Group, like, back in the 80s. So mm-hmm. they built a lot of lore for these characters and, like, a lot of nuance. And if you ever play, like, the Terrorist Hunt, some of their, like, nuance comes through. And, like, mm-hmm. they talk about it and, like, they bring it up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they built all this lore. They built everything. I'm surprised they never made a TV show out of it or followed up because... I think as of now, Rainbow Six is probably more popular than it ever has been in its like history. Yeah, um, and it's, it's a nine players. year old game now. <laughs> uh we are moving on to our final That's hot fine. take here. Which Imaru and Muda are gonna fucking love this one. Um, for kind of variety of reasons. Neo Tokyo twenty four eighteen says my controversial take Metal Gear Solid's controls, especially the older games are absolute dog shit and are part of the reason why I think that MGS is overrated. Sounds Man, like a skill issue to me. Suck ass, Sounds like bro. a skill issue to me. Yeah, dude, honestly. <laughs> you can't, well, you, 
What, you're going to be like Kyle here? A little baby can't get... A little fucking princess can't get past tank controls? <laughs> you what know, the fuck? You know what's actually fucked up about that? What? I've, com- I've beat an MGS1. And I don't see any issue with... Like, MG- the MGS1 controls are are dated, yes. Yeah, but, but they're not the way, bad. The, but the way that they, the way that they handle the camera in MGS One makes it work. It's mm-hmm. my biggest. It's my biggest difference between Resident Evil and MGS is just the way that the field is set up and the way the camera works. Yeah, it's a fixed it camera, just but works it works uh, well. It's a fixed camera, and the angles are uh, the angles are so good that you don't even notice that. My only complaint I would say is that maybe it's a little too finicky when you try to like grab someone from behind, because if you go through him. They you they get alerted and everyone knows where you are. I mean, it's yep. like that's it's like, not okay, that big of an issue though. The only bitching that I could ever stand on the controls maybe would be three. Because I remember when Snake Eater came out, we did complain about the fucking jungle and how mm-hmm. you know you have to really move slow in the. Re- so for anybody that doesn't know, Metal Gear Solid Three had multiple releases. Original Snake Eater, the camera was the fixed perspective. You could use the right analog to kind of move around. Yeah, so yeah. what happened was it was a lot bigger environments, um, and the enemy would actually be camouflaged into the environment. So you would really have to walk slowly um, and be really careful if you don't want to get detected or anything. Um, that might be the only thing about Metal Gear Solid Three. Um, and then they, when they re-released it, they introduced the toggle, tog- toggle-like camera where you could like yeah, a camera like four, is maybe around, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and then Metal Gear Solid Four was like a traditional shooter. Metal Gear Solid Five, best controls of the series. Um, yeah. Hell Divers yeah. Two, completely fucking aped Metal Gear Solid Five's control, no joke, um, and rightfully so. Great control mm-hmm. scheme, but yeah, the original. It's like I don't understand how the control scheme can make the games overhyped because. Then you're ignoring the whole context and the storylines, exactly and the themes, the presentation, the theme, yeah. the voice acting. The voice acting for that game, mind you, this is '98, where games had like Resident Evil One came out like two years before, with you know the infamous bad acting, and this yep. one just blew it out of the park. Everyone just plays their part so good. The music, insane, cavern, encounter, enclosure, all of those like classic themes. The whole like cinematics, the whole themes yep. that they touch, everything is just so good. I don't. I, I think it's deserving of all the hype. It deserved. I, it, I, yeah. it was a game Metal, that broke ground. Metal Gear Solid One on the original PlayStation, and to give you even more context, it's like I think it was Final Fantasy VII that released around the same time. FF7's mm. visuals, um, I think they were good for a different reason because the story was so grand and everything. But Metal Gear Solid One, like on the PlayStation. Like the lighting, the at- like the atmosphere, like Amaru said, was brilliant. Like yep. the original yeah. PlayStation release, the haunting nature of Shadow Moses, you could sit in one Iconic. location. That that like to this day is a style that is replicated whenever people mm. remake PlayStation One games. That is a de facto like the most iconic PS One graphical style. And like mm-hmm. speaking of graphics, Metal Gear Solid Two for a fucking early PlayStation Two release, two thousand sixty frames. 2001 animated faces rain of everything like the Mm. amount of detail put into it Mm -hmm. kojima fucking killed it mgs3 on the playstation 2 when it dropped blew minds away dude that again that's 2001 what what came out 10 years before super mario world like fucking look at that leap (laughs) it's insane i I still think it looks great and cinematic as fuck Like, people who dog on MGS4, like, again, take yourself back to the PlayStation 3 era. It's like, the MGS4 is one of those games where, because of the way that they had the sound in the game, they uncompressed it because they were on Blu-rays. Mm-hmm. If you ever put headphones on, like, a good pair of headphones, and you just, like, sit still in Afghanistan, you just hear the fucking, like, bullets whirring. Like, it's, like, the immersion is fucking insane oh, in yeah. that game, you know? So I'm the know. I'm the one That's person perfect. here who shouldn't like early MGS games, and even I have to defend it, saying that yeah. it, they're good. And here's the thing: I don't, I personally don't feel like uh, MGS games, despite the fact that I feel like that they do have good gameplay. I don't feel like that is, that should be the focus of, uh, that shouldn't be the focus of why you're playing an MGS game. You should be playing an MGS game because of the the storyline that's present there. Yeah, uh, but I mean, like even, you said, even to Kojima go into the gameplay, made it's like they're pretty Kojima good. made a literally a cinematic masterpiece. Mm-hmm. If you looked, if you look at it, 
I mean, there's a lot of cutscenes in them, but that's a Kojima thing. And he tells a hell of a story with it. I think even, even with like sense. <laughs> even with like MGS five, right? Like the worst story of the franchise. Um, just because of how disjointed it feels compared to the rest. The gameplay in that game alone, Kojima does not fuck around. Like Oh no, of course. Dropping you I remember that when he showed the map, right? Like the map size comparison. because uh, <laughs> it was like fucking Shadow Mode is like this big, Big Shell is like this big. Yeah. And you got three is bigger. Yeah. Four is bigger, and then five is like <laughs> Afghanistan is just <laughs> yeah. this big, right? Angola. Like, yeah. But you I mean, like that two game, sets of maps, yeah. And that game was still like the best intro to the series I had because I remember like when he slaps the horse in Afghanistan, it's like let the legend come back to life. I'm like, hmm. bro, like actually felt like a fo- like it really was like the best. Se- I wouldn't say the best open world game because it's not alive enough to be an open world game. But no. sandbox wise, bro, drop me into a hot zone and just watch me clear up fucking afghanistan like i'll exactly. make a business <laughs> <laughs> that's just great and even though it's not like it's the weakest metal gear story at least we had like tiny bits that kind of like concluded some spa- some uh parts uh spoilers alert again uh that tiny call that you see where zero visit where a uh, big boss visits zero i think it is when he's in a no, coma no, zero, visits big, zero visits big boss in a coma i forgot yeah yeah that shit is great i love that shit because that so much an animosity was between those two for years and years and that was the last time they would see each other because yeah the um, zero would get the virus and it would be catatonic after that right i think i remember yeah yeah exactly. and you gotta remember big boss is such a charismatic motherfucker that even though he actually fucked venom snake in the asshole by betraying his fucking second in command at mother base <laughs> and like switching out his identities he still was willing to die for his ass fucking 10 years later when he was fighting solid snake Exactly, without even yeah. skipping a beat that's how fucking like when like i remember the ending of that game and again spoilers it's a fucking mm. old game but when he smashes the mirror and looks in he's like bro i'm like ready now? to die for you boss i'm ready exactly. to go exactly <laughs> well I'm this like, is shit. how it's gonna be exactly <laughs> yeah uh so, Mura, I, I got a question for you uh yeah. since now metal gear or solid it's basically kind of like a, a franchise that slowed down a lot one of the most widely available games now is revengeance and i don't know how do you feel about people that just got into that because of the memes and stuff because it's too bombastic it's like metal gear solid yeah. but on crack it's really like really too I, bombastic a little i too dislike far. the rising story just because i felt like mgs4 was such a great end of the series same For those here, of you yeah. don't know like the finale of mgs4 the ride in ending beautiful ending like best way to fucking perfect. send off the perfect character. exactly with, that shit brings tears to my eyes every time I watch it. And then to know that four years later in the story, he's like a fucking cyborg ninja rules of nature. Even, like even fucking... more cyborg than before. Like, what, <laughs> like, what, what happened? <laughs> and, and, and I think that the, the thing that burns me about the story is like, I wouldn't bitch about it so much because the original design of Rising was supposed to be an explanation between what happened in two and four. Because exactly. remember, in four, Raiden comes back as a fucking cyborg ninja. So you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Rising was supposed to explain how he helped Sonny, the girl, escape Patriot control, exactly. and then how he turned into this. Because I remember how much of a whiplash was, because at the end of 2, yeah. I can't, this is all spoilers from Metal Gear, one of my favorite things is that I only had a PS2 by this point. I just beat mm-hmm. 3, and like the same night, I beat 2. One yeah. of the biggest things is at the end, is like, oh man, we got the, uh, all the names for the Patriots and everything, but there's one problem. Wow, they're all dead. What? Yeah. And the game ends. And that was like, oh my God, I can't wait to get a PS3 to like play 4. I play 4 and it starts with Snake Old living in a plane with his husband and a child. It's yeah, like, exactly. okay, what happened? What did I miss? Like, what, who is this kid? Like, exactly. and yeah, yeah, I want to say, um, Metal Gear Solid is the only game that's portrayed a gay relationship so fucking naturally. Perfect. Like, yeah. no, like, I remember in 1, I was like, oh, Otacon and Snake are bros. And then in 4, I'm like, <laughs> Oh, they're a little more than bros. Uh, <laughs> they have a child and everything. Like they're yeah. racing this kid, <laughs> and I love because uh, take yourself like before MGS4 even released, because you know that at the end of the first one you got two options: uh, give up the torture or not, like Meryl dies or not. And for the longest time, people thought the bad ending was the canon one because you never see Meryl again, and you are with Otacon all the time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until four when Meryl shows up again. It's like oh, okay, so both survived <laughs> that's the other thing that changed there 
Yeah, and she also yeah, didn't no. appear that she aged at all between fucking like one. one yeah, she four. she came back looking like Rhea Ripley. It's like fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I still, dude. I mean, like to this day, like even when people talk about like an atmosphere, like when people talk about immersion, I still remember how blown away I am when I made my four hour Metal Gear video. I played that like portion of the cutscene in length, the one where like Liquid is escaping eastern europe and the whole u.s military comes and like oh yeah him. and he's just like ha ha bitches lock you out of your guns yeah. and they're like fuck <laughs> <laughs> guns yeah. of the patriots just go like that you know what my favorite part for someone who who's like played the original and everything i don't think i ever have a feel kind of like episode four of mgs4 when you go back to shadow moses and you slowly go to the helipad and the, the best is yet to come starts playing. It's like, oh my God. And you see the place abandoned, the shovel, like yeah, the, the island is literally sinking to that. And you, as long as soon as you like get close to the helipad, you hear the like the, the little flute the, yeah, from the, the song. It's like, oh my God. And you see the little, you, you get the, the prompt to press button and get re remember, like you remember stuff that happened before, get flashbacks. Oh man, that is so good. That is so good. I I have played that entire chapter with tears in my eyes. <laughs> Such a good one. So as we begin to wrap this up, uh I'm surprised that I didn't think we'd be able to make a full episode out of just the hot takes, but we absolutely have. <laughs> Perfect. Um my question for you guys is do you guys do you guys have a true Gaming or cinema hot take? Gaming, well, since I'm in the Sonic community, most of my stuff is like from Sonic. I <laughs> this is a Sonic related. I'll say Shadow should have stayed dead at the end of Sonic Adventure Two. Oh, damn. I don't the think thing the is first, that yeah. the thing is that Shadow returned in the in the for like the, the later games because he was so popular that fans just wanted him back. Doesn't matter if effect, if affected the story or not, they just wanted him back. But then Heroes came out and had this little plot about Eggman making shadow robots. And people were like, oh, maybe that's that's going to uh, that's gonna be shadow. It's going to be a robot. But then he's like, no, you know what? Fuck it. It's just shadow. It's just shadow. Yeah. And my hot take is that shadow should have stayed dead. And if he had to return, he should have been an android. That would have been so much a much more interesting character analysis and like character journey, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Muda, do you have a gaming or cinema hot take? You said something about Bethesda? Well, oh, okay, it's going to be a hot take. It's going to be a oof, really fucking oof, goofy okay. I, I feel like I feel like me and Mood are about to go down it's, the same road. It's spicy. Here. It's no, spicy. It's, it's not the same about Bethesda. I mean, I can give you both, to, to be honest. Uh, I think Bethesda has not made a good game since Daggerfall, but that's not the hottest oof. one I have. Damn. I think Watch Dogs 2 is a better open world than GTA 5. What? I okay, that, okay. That's okay. really let me, spicy. Let me, let me let me explain why. Okay. Wait, hold on. What are we talking about? That the British one? No, 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 no. That's Legion. We're... I'm talking about the one in okay, San Francisco. Okay. Okay. When we're literally Dogs sucking too. GTA's cock like two hours ago. <laughs> we were, but I'm bringing up Watch Dogs Two as the only exception to the list. I'm not even bringing up Cyberpunk. The only reason I bring up Watch Dogs Two is recently I was replaying the whole game again. And uh, so, if you guys have never played Watch Dogs, it's a sort of hacker open world game made by Ubisoft. And again, yep. the fact that I'm, fu it's Ubisoft shits out a lot of games, but when they make, when they cook, they cook. So Watch Dogs 1, I think was a pretty good game. Um, even with all the controversy, I still replay it from time to time. I like the story. I like just the feeling of Chicago. I like the vibe of the storyline. Watch Dogs 2 is like a much more lighthearted game where the whole parody, and it's, again, it's all parody like GTA. It's a parody of modern day tech bro culture, like san francisco silicon valley tech culture you're a group of hackers you're going up against companies that are representing like you know fucking google facebook tesla uh, mm -hmm. spacex um and the whole point of the game is you're hacking building up a botnet just to basically take over bloom or like you know make a fool of them but the reason why i always say the open world in my opinion is better is because i'm a huge fan of ai in open world like how the civilians and how the how the world interacts right yep. one of yep. the things i do in every game is I always fucking get into a fight with the police to see how they chase, uh, what their parameters are. One of the reasons I always hyped up GTA V was 
if you ever like get out of your car and like hide behind a dumpster in Los Santos, they will actually establish search patterns, right? Like they'll get out of their cars, they'll block off exit ways, they'll send in like search teams. It's like kind of MGS2, right? Like an MGS2, if you ran into a certain room, they would yep. like clear everything. And it yep. was pre planned back in the day for certain rooms that have like a whole script, but GTA was like more dynamic because open world. Watchdogs, kind of the same thing, right? Like the cops would interact with you like that. The NPCs were all interacting with each other in crowds. So I love that kind of shit. One of the things I loved about that game was you could unlock an ability that would allow you to dox, that would allow you to like SWAT people. So in the look, the way that I played half of that game was if I needed to get into a gang hideout, I would send a fucking FBI team on the gang leader and I would send another like gang hit squad on another like cop. So it would just be like this three-way battle between the San Francisco PD and two fucking gangs. And then like as they're shooting at each other in their own fight, I'm like sneaking into the battleground through like tear gas, gunfire, grabbing my shit, getting into my car and like driving the fuck out. And like I love games where I can like fuck with the AI that way. And that's one of the things that I so hope good. GTA that's one of the things I hope GTA six does is like down the road, I want to be able to get, like, two gangs to be in actual fights with each other. I want to see the Vice City police, like, fuck around with people other than me, you know? Like, <laughs> treat other, th like, bigger threats with more se severity. I like that about the, I like that about the open world. And that's why, like, when the, with the British one, Legions or whatever, big downgrade. Because they didn't have any of that. So, mm. I, I kind of like that about Watch Dogs, too. That's one of my better open world games. Um, okay. One of the only yeah. things I could see honestly compete with Los Santos. And it's, by the way, I hate the fact that most of these open world games I suck off Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs, GTA, they're all set in fucking California. Like, it's almost like <laughs> that's the only place game developers could set a fucking game. And now that well, now yeah. we finally get it in Miami, I'm like, thank fuck for that. Another yeah. open world. <laughs> Something different, fucking thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, I would say my. My two gaming hot takes. Mm -hmm. uh, this will definitely piss off some people. I personally believe that the Fallout franchise, uh, 3, uh, New Vegas, and 4, are no different than uh, sports games. They're all just reskins of each other. I mean, I wouldn't say four is one, but the other one maybe. I will. I will wait, say wait, this: wait, wait. You think the Fallout games three. Are I say, I say three and New Vegas have the best dialogue system, but if you go, if you get past the dialogue systems, they're all just reskins of each other. What well, do you mean? Yeah. Like Fallout three and New Vegas are reskins. Fallout three, New Vegas, and uh, Fallout four are all fundamentally the same exact game. Just with a different skin on. Okay, each but like, one. what what do you mean? Like, are they just like set in a post apocalypse? Because that's kind of just all well, Fallout. Of, though. Co of course, Fallout is all post apocalyptic. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, if you were to layer each one of those games on top of each other, there is fundamentally no difference between any of the three, other than the fact that four introduced a, uh, a settlement building mechanic. I mean, the Which stories people... are different. The lore is old, you know. Yeah, especially in New Vegas. <laughs> yeah, New Vegas. Which, New Vegas. New Vegas is considered the best of the three, and I personally, I personally will say that I personally think that three is better than New Vegas. I mean, I agree on that too. I like three more. I don't agree, but I will not say it's wrong because three is also a phenomenal game, yep. in my opinion. Um, I think we can all agree that four. While it might have the best gunplay of the series, it's definitely um, the weakest story wise, and it's yeah. the weakest story wise and dialogue wise. Three, okay, so with Fallout, I, I every time, I, dude, I love going to every single point of interest in that game. I mm -hmm. think they're all made really well. Same with New Vegas, Fallout Four. I really thought I was going to put a lot more hours of my life into, but I don't even think I've done fifty percent oh. of that fucking game at all. Like it didn't have anything like. Like, I remember fucking, maybe it was just I was younger, but when I played 3, remember when you walked into the Dunwich building? Oh, yeah. Like, bro, I remember doing that shit at, like, fucking late at night. Fucking oh, that CRT shit was TV. scary. Shit freaked me the fuck out when I first saw is that, it. Is that the know? one that had the monolith in the uh, in the back? It's the one that had the fucking, I think it was a Necronomicon in it. 
Oh yeah, yeah. He has like a <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has like a like a broken part that has like a monolith. If you get yeah. close, you hear like whispers and stuff. Here's the thing: I prefer New Vegas, but I will 100% agree with you that three has more iconic locations. Yeah. Dunwich Building, I mean, the Super I mean, Duper like, Market, yeah. Republic of Dave. I mean, like the, the Vegas is like I think Vegas is a in, as a place to be in is fucking boring because it's like if you ever actually been to the city of Vegas and I've been there a few times now, <laughs> it's there. like one small area. And like just desert, like that's it. Like the Mojave yeah. Desert is not that fucking interesting, but yeah. like comparing it to three, bro. I mean, fucking, you're in the capital wasteland. I mean, capital wasteland, yeah, exactly. The ability to stand at the Abraham like monument and like look at the fucking White House. I mean, that's fucking. Mm-hmm. And Ribbit then the City? DL, yeah, the oh, DLCs, the DLCs are great. alone, like the DLCs, like fucking the pit. Point. The Lookout. pit is awesome. Point look at yeah. too, yeah. Uh, Mother Sheet said that was kind of meh. I say. Upper Shankara should kind of as well, but those two are, are like fucking awesome. Yeah. You know what? I think one of my, my scenes is that I don't think I've ever finished Broken Steel. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, definitely more iconic locations in there. Like the the um, the Gary Bolt, that that's iconic but forever. That, that bolt that creepy fucking vault, dude. The creepy one is <laughs> I think the creepy one was the one uh well there was one with overgrown plants and overgrown human, but I think that's New Vegas actually. Uh, the one that has like a gas leak or something, and you like slowly see memories of Bold One Hundred One. Yeah, remember that one, that one too. That that one was freaky. Yeah, no, that game was freaky. Uh, you- fucking Sir, uh, Tranquility Lane. My God, Tranquility Lane, dude. That shit. This you know me my favorite part out. about Tranquility Tranquility Lane is like what? I went to it. Mm-hmm. And I skipped like four main missions because I accidentally went to Tranquility Lane. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I wasn't even supposed to go there, but I walked into it. And then I was like, I got into the pod and it was like, oh, I guess I found my dad. Cool. Oh, shit. Okay, dad, what's up? Uh, <laughs> insane. Beautiful. That shit was creepy, though. Like a Tranquility Lane stuff. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. It's like a no, fucking no, liminal stuff. space. Yeah. No, no kidding. I don't, think, back, I don't think New Vegas had any of that, though, did it? I don't remember. Not to be really. Honest. I it, should it replay was, it. It was far. It was far more action than it was. Mm-hmm. That's the thing about three. That thing. That three at times definitely has a horror atmosphere to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It definitely uh, captures more of that post-apocalyptic vibe. More more so than the "I'm a badass taking on the world" vibe. Mm-hmm. You still get pieces of that, but there. It, Three definitely focuses more on the horrors of the wasteland. I think four uh, is more. Uh, I think like so the way that I always do it, I'm like three has a more interesting environments. I think mm-hmm. four has the more interesting like factions with Kaiser's Legion, the NCR. Yeah. I mm-hmm, think yeah. I think a lot of like, and the thing I like about New, New Vegas. Vegas is that mm-hmm. it's not as if like they make the NCR to be like the greatest people in the world, and then Kaiser no, is exactly. like, the most evil. Yeah. Like, and the Brotherhood of Steel. Like, let's not forget the fucking biggest, like, fucking post-apocalyptic races you could find. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, they no, all there, have, there's like, a lot of new ones. Yeah, every, everything yeah. has their pros and cons. Like, they all kind of suck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, the only the only faction that just sucks wholeheartedly are the Powder Gangers. I mean, I fucking make a, <laughs> oh, I yeah, make a mission to up. go and fuck them up immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, every, I don't know. Like, when I'm playing New Vegas, like, it's got the better factions. I don't think 4 has the better of anything because it's, like, I don't think, aside from the main, like, you know, the iconic factions, I think the only mm. new ones they have are, like, the Minutemen and the Institute. Yeah. And oh, the railroad. Like, no, wait. No, you know what? The Institute and the Railroad, they actually were introduced in 3. Oh, yeah. Remember Ribbit City? That, that's the only thing I know. Ribbit City has a mission called the Replicant Man, where you meet this Harkon guy that's being chased mm-hmm. because he's a robot. Well, he's someone comes from the Commonwealth. That old man comes from the Commonwealth trying to get him back. Uh, and the other person trying to free the guy says he's from the Railroad. Right. And they took all that shit and say, and say okay, let's make the story based on that. But even with like even with like the Fallout like lore, right? Even with like the Fallout universe, it's like playing Fallout. 4, the, I would say the only thing that Fallout Four impressed me on was like the first intro cinematic. That one blew me away. I love that intro cinematic when mm-hmm. they were like introducing it, and then the rest of the game never matched that vibe. Never nope. even came close to it. Because what I think sucks about Fallout Four is I feel like it tried to be too cheerful, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, one of the things I liked about 3 was like that juxtaposition. And even New Vegas where it's like, you got all this 50s music, like howdy doody behavior. 
exactly. interspersed with like a fucking post-apocalyptic wasteland yeah, it's, of like absolute It's a fucked soil. up world. Yeah, it's a yeah. fucked up world. <laughs> you want me you want me to tell you what my issue is with four? What? It's colorful. Yeah, I, you, I honestly if you, prefer. If yeah. you walk around, if you walk around mm. it the way the wasteland of four, mm-hmm. it's a colorful environment. Mm-hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think it should be a colorful environment. It doesn't feel like three it came does. out with a, in the year of the piss green filter. That, that's <laughs> the thing that there was so many games with that green and yellow filter. Oh, I mean, like you want to know the worst piss filter? Probably like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. Oh God, that yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the pissiest to piss filter could get. <laughs> that or Ari, that or RE five, man. Yeah, RE five. No, 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 no. Deus Ex Human Revolution was like so piss oh filter. My God, dude. <laughs> that game had such a piss filter on it that when they remade it, not remade, but they made an updated director's cut, they like removed the piss filter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Oh, I beautiful. don't even know if they received complaints on it, but they themselves were just like, uh, "Yeah, we." Don't I, like I think they just realized it's like, bro, this is like too it's fucking a yellow, too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then like, uh, I think it was Fallout Three that was like fucking mega piss filter. It was like All it right, was just, green. Nope. It was green. Yeah. I don't know why it was just fucking green all over. And it was just like Gears of War One and Two were like all gray until fucking Three when they were like, "All right, let's let's try putting color into Unreal Engine." <laughs> Like sure, exactly. um, the the only the you know what the the other game that kind of had a weird like green filter though was like Batman at the time the Arkham games were also green filtered for a while. Yeah, Did they really. Arkham I Asylum think was. Arkham Asylum, yeah. Then the City came out. It had like a faint blue filter, but then Night yeah. came out and like, no, that shit is pure color. Night was like, let's just fucking make the graphics so good that it still holds up to this. Yeah, exactly. Game that shit, that game looks so good still, dude. It's insane. So, uh, to end this off, there's only one other gaming hot take I have, and I think all three of us will agree on this. Mm-hmm. And that is that the only reason Borderlands uh, is as popular as it is is because it was the first game to come out with its type of mechanics. What is its mechanics? Uh, lo- the lo- essentially, essentially the looter shooter million different fucking guns type thing. Yeah, I would say so. I can agree. I, I do like the I art think... style uh, though. I, I am a big fan of how the, how the game looks. Not that big I... a fan now of the humor. But yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely yeah. the way it looks, I still like that. I think uh, I think Borderlands for me, I always have a special place because it's the only game that's like basically a live service without the online only requirement and shit. Yeah. Like you can play that game without all the bullshit attached to it. Yeah. Um, and it's mm-hmm. like the only game, like I, I recently picked up three on PlayStation 5 physical and I was surprised because I had some of my buddies over and I bought this new TV for the living room, like big place. So we sat down and mm-hmm. like, I found out that you, you could, could actually. I think you player. can still split screen. You can oh, four wow. player split screen it. Four yeah, player. yeah. So yeah, Borderlands is one of the very few games that still has split screen well, uh, co op. When they wow. re released it for PS4 again, even Borderlands 1 is four player split screen. 2, the yep. whole collection is four player split screen. Even, I think it's Tiny Tina is also four player as really? well, too. That, oh, Tiny oh, Tina surprises me. Yeah, we gotta finish that, that game because we had yeah, it. I, I remember that. we played it on PS4 once and never again. <laughs> Did we buy it on PS4? Yeah, uh, we, I have it on PS4. We all bought it on yeah, PS4. We had to have. We played it once and never again. Well, we should. I know we have it. another we one on PC. It's not like we didn't. It's not like we disliked it. No, it was a decent game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If if you like Borderlands, it's what you got. <laughs> More Borderlands. We, tr- we tried three on PC. I think it's just like you said, Amar. I think the humor is the only thing that doesn't like fucking jive with us. Mm. Yeah, just because of age now. But... I feel. I feel like back when I was like. 15 16 when borderlands one released that shit was awesome and yeah. now i'm just like now i'm just like oh wow claptrap yeah. is really fucking annoying yeah even back then when we were playing that game i would always usually play it with like a video on the side and yeah and you know fucking whatever the game is the game <laughs> doesn't really yeah. matter <laughs> As Perfect. long as I'm, as long as I'm seeing uh fucking purples and above drop, and I'm fine. Exactly. Just play the game while I have my astrophobia videos in the background. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> but that being said, I think that's the end of this. We got way more out of this than I expected. Again, if you guys have hot takes, leave them down below. We probably won't react to as many next time because we'll have some 
other topics to talk about, but uh, we're one subscriber away from a hundred. So, ooh, cool. Nice. Let's uh, let's fucking go, right? right. Let's mm. go rob some banks, boys.